For the last six years, I've been making videos here on YouTube. This journey started as a creative outlet and eventually morphed into so much more. I launched my channel by making travel vlogs with my wife under the name Wanderworks. We explored some really cool places but learned that travel vlogging just wasn't something we wanted to do long term. So I started pursuing my passion of adventure filmmaking and this channel evolved into what it is today. So in this video I'm going to go through 9 lessons that I've learned on how to be a successful creator and some of the things that have helped me along the way. If you're new here to this channel, my name is Jeff Dovey. I'm an adventure filmmaker, and on this channel, I teach you how to make better videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of these videos. There's a lot of things that I've learned making content on this platform that have really sculpted how I'm going to approach the next year and just kind of how I approach everything moving forward. First big lesson is that the numbers really don't matter. If you set a goal for yourself to get 10,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers, a million subscribers, well, once you get there, it's, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. It's a reason to celebrate. You hit this goal of a subscriber milestone. But the next day, you're gonna have to set a new goal and you're gonna be moving towards a different objective. And in the end, what does a million subscribers really mean? Like what to you is a million subscribers? I think the biggest question that you need to ask yourself is why do I want a million subscribers? Like what is the purpose of that? Because having something like a million subscribers doesn't necessarily mean that you are successful. So you have to think of what does success mean to you? Does it have to do with your income? Does it have to do with just having a place to have a creative outlet? Like what is the purpose of making videos? And we set these goals for ourselves, like getting to these different subscriber milestones or these different objectives. But a lot of times we don't take the time to take a step back and actually think of, well, why do we want that? Why do we need this in our life? So one big thing that you can take away from this is don't set your goals based around just getting a bright, shiny plaque. Figure out what it is that you actually want and what goals do you need to set to be able to obtain that? And what happens when you actually get there? is are you done are you going to be setting new goals like think through the longevity of what you're doing rather than just thinking short term and trying to get this one number goal another big lesson that i've learned is that quality doesn't really matter that much it does and it doesn't so the overall quality of videos that we see here on the platform are rising. Creators are getting better at shooting, they're getting better at editing, but overall, if you can tell a good story, then the quality doesn't matter as much. There is a huge range of quality on the platform, and if you're just someone shooting with an iPhone, well, you can make videos that can reach millions of people. I have saw a channel recently that was shot all on an iPhone 11 and all the videos had 4 million views. So the idea of needing all this expensive equipment, cameras, gimbals, drones, everything, it's, it's not necessary. You could use just the tools that you have at your disposal and you need to think of, well, who is your audience and what are you making videos for and how can I tell a story that's engaging? And if you're not making entertaining videos, if you're not making videos that necessarily have a story, say you just want to show how to fix a flat tire, well, you still have to know why you're making videos. and You have to know what the purpose is of that video. Is it educational? Is it entertaining? But at the end of the day, the quality doesn't matter as long as you satisfy what the person came to your video for. So if someone came to learn how to fix a flat tire, they're not going to care if you're using 
A7S Mark III and a drone to capture B-roll, all they care about is getting that content from you. So quality really doesn't matter that much and it gives you a lot of freedom when you're out filming to just let things not be perfect all the time. If you are someone that wants to shoot on high-end cameras and make the best looking content, that's great, but you also can realize that things don't have to be perfect. And that's definitely a big lesson that I've learned coming from more of a filmmaking background with a production company. It's just, you can just let things slide sometimes. They don't always have to be perfect. How cool is this? Just one tree out here in these hills by itself. Pretty random. So the next lesson that I've learned is only focus on the things that we can control. And what I mean by that is things like what the algorithm does, we don't really have a whole lot of control on. Yes, there's ways that we can position our videos in a way where maybe the algorithm will pick up on it and put it in suggested or put it on the homepage, but at the end of the day, we really don't have control over that. We have control over making videos. And if we've made a video that performs well, we can try to dissect that and make more videos like that. But if we focus too much on these things like the algorithm, well, it just clouds your judgment and it clouds what you're doing. And we should really just be focusing on making better videos. At the end of the day, if we can make a good video that reaches the audience that we're trying to reach, that's all that really matters. And I think one of the big traps that we get stuck in as creators is just looking at our analytics all the time. I know one of the things that I'm gonna do in 2022 is gonna be to not look at my analytics every day, maybe not even every week. I'm gonna try to only look at it once in a while, probably do a day where I really dig into my analytics, find out what's working, what's not, and then make adjustments to my content moving forward. But when we're constantly just looking at our analytics on our phone every day, looking at how many views we're getting per hour, it's really not helping us as creators. It's actually putting more stress on you. And focusing so much on the numbers is one reason that creators will burn out. I know that I've had periods where I felt completely wiped and it was because I'm constantly just checking my analytics and trying to figure out exactly what worked that day versus the day before or why that hour was getting a big push of traffic and this hour wasn't. Like it, you'll make yourself go crazy if you look at this kind of stuff all the time. So focus on the things that we can control. Focus on your videos. I thought it was gonna be awful weather on this hike, but the sun just came out. I'm gonna climb up here to see if I see the ocean. But the next lesson that I've learned is don't respond to trolls. Don't give them the time of day. And I see it all the time in my comments. I see just people talking trash. I see people saying the most hurtful things. And I've seen other creators talking about this as well. See on Twitter, people showing comments of what people have left and then their response and sometimes it goes back and forth. You know, when it comes to trolls, the way I've learned to deal with them is to just ignore it. It's one thing if someone's giving you constructive feedback or you made a legit error, but there are still a lot of comments of just things that shouldn't be said or people should just keep to themselves. A lot of times it's probably just a reflection of that person being upset or that person being jealous at the end of the day. But the best part about YouTube specifically is there's a tool to deal with trolls. It's called hide user from channel. So what you can do is if someone leaves a nasty comment is you just go through and hit hide user from channel and basically that user is blocked. They don't realize they're blocked. So they'll try to comment on more future videos, but those comments will never show up. And it is one of the most satisfying things when someone is just talking trash. They write this huge, big, long, five paragraph thing about how you're wrong and how you're the worst person ever and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I've gotten stuff like that. But you go down and you hit hide user from channel, never see that person again and that comment is gone. And they don't even realize that they've been blocked. And speaking of trolls, I know there's someone that's gonna say, 
you're out of breath, why don't you work out more? It's ridiculous. Every time I do a hiking video, someone talks about how I'm out of breath and I need to get in shape. I'd use it from channel. This is crazy. All of these hills were super brown like a few days ago and it's just been pouring rain the last few days. And so they're all starting to turn green. This is like one area I like to come up and film all the time and it's gonna be amazing in a few days. But the next important lesson that I've learned is that consistency is more important than having a viral hit. If you have a video that gets 10 million views, that's great, but if you don't have a consistent practice to making videos at a certain interval every week, every two weeks, every other day, whatever it is, then having a viral video doesn't mean anything. You could have a video that really just takes off and blows up your channel, but if you're not ready for that traffic, if you're not ready to be consistent, then you're not gonna be able to find success on the platform, unless your success is defined by having one viral hit. The important thing with being a creator is just being consistent over a long period of time. I like to tell the story of when I first started my channel. I made over 200 videos. They're all travel vlogs or just vlogs around Santa Monica where I was living at the time. And in that first year, I only made about $40. I got monetized, but it was pennies. And over time, I figured out what works and I figured out what I like making and what kind of content does perform well. And I've been able to do that again and again and be able to see the numbers actually grow. So one of the biggest things I've learned is just keep moving forward. Don't worry about if something takes off, don't worry about if something tanks, just keep the consistency moving forward. So another big lesson that I've learned is don't take on more than you can handle. And there's definitely times where I've taken on way too much. I've had, I've said yes to too many things. And then I just feel stuck because I have so many different things that I have to do at one time that I end up getting nothing done at all. So in general, like the saying says, don't bite off more than you can chew. And as a creator, the more that I say no, the easier it is to make videos. I focus on one video at a time now, and if I have ideas pop up, if I have things on my agenda that I need to get done, I make sure to take care of those so that when I come out and film a video like this, this is the only thing that I'm thinking about. And when I go on a trip, I just went up to Death Valley recently, spent multiple days filming, and that was the only thing I thought about on the entire trip was working on that video and just being in that really awesome place. Because I found that if I'm thinking about a hundred things, I'm working on a course at the same time as trying to make a video while dealing with emails and sponsors and thinking about how I'm gonna tie affiliates in or, you know, there's so many different components to being a creator. And I've decided just to take a step back, do less, but put all my effort into the things that I am doing. Another lesson that I've learned is stop listening to all of the education that's around us. I know that might sound counterintuitive because there's so many good resources out there, but if you're just binging YouTube educators and you're listening to everything they say and applying it all to your channel, well, that's gonna set you up for failure. There's a lot of things that you have to figure out for yourself and you have to figure out for your channel. And just recently, I've been chatting with one of my buddies who's a creator that has a channel similar size to mine, but completely different niche. And he was told by a YouTube educator to take off the call to action to say subscribe at the beginning of a video. And this is something that was told to me a while back as well. And we started looking at our data and we found that the videos where we had this call to action gained subscribers at a much faster rate than the videos that didn't have this call to action. It's just a minor little switch, but it is something that actually affects, at least on our channels, 
if people subscribe from watching that video. It's super interesting because I'm constantly hearing of people saying take these kinds of things off of your videos, but then you look at the data over tons of videos and the data is different. And this is what I mean by don't always listen to the education. I think there's a lot of good tips and tricks out there, but it really comes down to testing things. And what I've learned is if I'm gonna make a change, I'm gonna try something new on my channel, I'm gonna test it out thoroughly and I'm going to find data points and see if it actually works or if it doesn't work. Because if you're just doing things blindly based on what someone says in a 10 tips video, then you might actually set yourself up to have a negative impact on your channel. So everyone's journey is a little bit different and everyone's channel is gonna be different. Something that works on my channel isn't necessarily gonna work on your channel. And this is for every channel out there. There are things that some creators do that work super well, but that's for that specific style of content reaching that audience. And there's things that other channels will do that will be completely different and they'll also work. So I guess the biggest lesson that I've learned over the years is don't consume so much. And the biggest thing that's helped me is having other creators that are friends that we can bounce ideas off of, that we can actually look at our data and compare channels side by side. Because when I do that, that's when we end up finding things that actually work versus just listening to a tips video that we found on the platform. Another huge lesson that I've learned is that comparison will ruin your experience here on YouTube. There's a lot of creators and there's a lot of creators doing exactly what you're doing or something similar. And as soon as you start comparing and start trying to figure out why their videos are performing better than yours or why they are having a higher subscriber count or anything like that, it's just going to get into your head and you're not focusing on the things that actually matter because Again, we have no control over any of that. And everyone is coming to YouTube from a different perspective. Some people have more time to be able to make videos. Some people have a family. Some people have only one day a week to make a video because they have another job. Don't think about other creators because every creator's at a different stage in life. Every creator has different things going on behind the scenes. And so as soon as you start comparing, you're starting to put yourself in this position where you're just gonna be up in your head. You're gonna be thinking about everything that you could be doing versus actually doing the things that will help you grow your channel, be successful, whatever your goals are. And some of the things that I've noticed over the years is that two channels might do the exact same thing, but for some reason, one channel will perform better than the other. And it might have to do with the way that someone is on screen might have to do with the background, might have to do with the pacing, the editing, like there's so many factors. So as soon as you start comparing yourself to other people, you're gonna set yourself up for failure and it's gonna lead to burnout because you're gonna be over analyzing, analysis paralysis, however you wanna call it, you're just gonna be overthinking it too much rather than actually just going out and doing it and figuring out what works for you and figuring out what works for the audience that you want to build. Another huge lesson that I've learned is you don't have to have a plan. You don't have to know exactly where you're going. You could just go for it and just figure it out along the way. And this is something that's plagued me, especially in the last couple of years. I've been over analyzing everything and trying to figure out what are my goals or, or where do I want the direction of my channel to go or how do I want to position myself? So I did a YouTube mastermind back in early 2020 in the beginning of the pandemic. And that pet mastermind really didn't help me that much. It actually put me in the wrong direction. It made me overanalyze everything that I was doing. And it just like had a, such a negative impact on the content I was creating. In 2019, I was on a good path. I felt like I was making the videos I wanted to make and I was trying new styles of content and I was really just going for it. And then I took this course, I took this mastermind, 
where we met every week, talked about YouTube, talked about goals and objectives and the things that we wanted to do. And I felt like it just, looking back, it put me in the wrong direction. It made me get stuck in analysis paralysis. And over the last couple of years, it's been something that's just dragging on me in the back of my mind. And one of the big things that had a negative impact on me was this whole idea of having to have like a set plan, a set goal of objective that you're trying to achieve and setting all these smart goals to get there. And it's just, it's too much at the end of the day. Sometimes you just have to be okay with making kind of the kind of videos that you like making, figuring out your goals and your direction as you make those videos. This channel started as a travel vlog channel with me and my wife, and it's gone a completely different direction. And that's okay. Your channel can evolve over time. And one thing with this lesson that I've learned is that there's no reason just to start over. I feel like a lot of times if we feel like we're going down the wrong path, we have to like start over. And I've seen a lot of creators start second YouTube channels. It's almost as a way to start fresh. But in reality, you're splitting your time. And if you start over, if you're just like wipe everything and I'm gonna do something completely different, well, you're basically starting at square one again. And unless you absolutely need to switch everything and completely start fresh, it's better just to keep moving forward and just building on what you've already done and just keep figuring it out for yourself along the way. And that's the way I'm gonna approach everything moving forward is I'm just gonna keep going. I'm not gonna set these big lofty goals of I need to get X, Y, and Z and I, I need to specifically target this one audience and I need to do these specific types of videos and I'm gonna do the things that I wanna do and I'm going to watch my analytics once in a while, see how videos perform, make some educated decisions based on that, and just kind of keep going. I think when you take a step back from the whole thing and you can figure out ultimately what you want in life, then you can find a rhythm and you can be making content and you can enjoy the process rather than stressing about it all the time. Now, I'm filming this on New Year's Eve, so by the time you're watching this, it's already 2022, so happy New Year's. But one thing I always like to do when I start the new year is come up with a word, one word, that basically is going to define my year. So instead of setting a goal, like I'm gonna lose weight, or I am gonna get a million subscribers, or something like that, I like to just set a word. And so it's something to fall back on when you're trying to figure out like, is something working, is it not? Fall back on this word and it's gonna help guide what you do in that year. So my word for this year is actually courage. And the reason I chose this word is because this idea of if you wanna do something, just go do it. Have the courage and just go for it. If not now, then when? If you've been thinking about doing something in the back of your mind, you just keep putting it off, well, when are you gonna do it? And so that's how I'm gonna approach this year. Instead of putting things off, I'm gonna make them happen. I'm gonna have the courage to just go for it and just go all in, because why not? So the sun is about to set. I want you to think of what your one word is gonna be for 2022. And I want you to tell me down in the comments what that word is. I'll see you on the next one.